Hi National 5 and welcome to our next topic. So we're going to be looking at National 5 asses and bases. Okay, so it's a brand new topic and this is the last topic of Unit 1. Okay, so once we've done this we'll be finishing Unit 1. So, as with all the videos you'll be used to this by now but with all the videos basically what I want you to do is what I write I also want you to write, okay? So you're going to make a wee set of notes. I'll give you some questions to do, and yeah, that'll be it, okay? So, first things first, we need to look at the pH scale, okay? Now, some of you might know this already, but pH essentially just means the power of hydrogen okay and we're going to look into that in a wee bit more detail as we get through this um, booklet this topic sorry so pH scale it ranges from 1 to 14 okay in fact it actually it, it can range from like below zero to negative numbers to way above 14 but at national five we're just focusing on from ph1 to ph14 okay now you've already done a wee bit of the ph scale you did it in second year or you should have done it in second year but i'm just gonna i'm gonna recap it now we are going to in second year you would have learned about acids and alkalis okay so acids have a uh, pH less than, I'm also going to write that symbol, yeah, you should have came across that in maths already, that just means less than, okay, so acids have a pH less than 7, okay, alkalis have a uh, pH greater than, okay, I'm going to use the symbol for greater than 7, okay, you would have learned that in second year. Now, uh, what you also need to know is neutral solutions, okay, an example of that is the most common neutral solution is water, so neutral solutions have a pH equal to 7, okay? So, that's what you need to know that, yeah? So, if a solution has a pH of 6.5, it's an acid because it's less than 7. If it has a pH of 6.999999, it's still an acid because it's less than 7, okay? So, just make sure you are aware of that. Now, I'm going to show you a wee sort of diagram of the pH scale, okay? So, your neutral solutions, they, when we're checking for pH, they tend to turn like pH paper or universal indicator, I'll, I'll talk about them in a wee while, uh, they'll turn them a sort of green colour. Acids, they range from a red uh, through to orange, through to yellow uh, kind of colour and anything above seven tends to be like a, a really dark green, blue starting to venture into the purple side, okay? So, just make a wee note here. There are multiple ways to record pH. Okay, so again, I, I, I spoke about it just there, we could use pH paper, we could use universal indicator, or we could use a pH meter. Now, these are all things that you have came across in second year, and don't worry if you've forgotten or if you were off that day or whatever, um, I'm going to do a wee quick demonstration. Okay, so there are multiple ways to record pH. Now, what I've got here is I've just got a beaker filled with uh, tap water and I have some 
universal indicator here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to place that in, and as expected, it turns, turns green. Yeah, so water, pH is 7, it's a neutral solution. Okay, now I've got an empty beaker here. What I'm going to do, just going to grab some uh, hydrochloric acid, okay, and pour that in. And what colour should our acid go? If we look at that, it's below 7, acids are below 7, so we're looking for a red, orange, yellow colour. So we'll see what happens here. red. How nice is that? Yeah, so it turns quite a nice red colour. Yeah, and that's because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Okay, so the stronger the acid, the closer it is to 1. Okay, the weaker the acid, the closer it is to 7. But again, I'll, I'll write a wee note on that. Right, here's another empty beaker, and I'm going to put some sodium hydroxide in okay and again this is a this is a a base or sorry a, 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 this is a base it's an alkali but i'll talk about the difference between the two in a future lesson so sodium hydroxide i'm going to pour some universal indicator in and goes a nice purple color how cool is that yeah so again if we get a ph scale back um it's purple so sodium hydroxide the reason it's purple is because it's a strong alkali, yeah? Um, the further away from 7, the stronger it is. The closer it is to 7, the weaker the alkali is, okay? So, we'll make a wee note on strong uh, acids. Strong acids tend to be closer to pH 1 and weaker acids tend to be closer to pH 7. But never 7, because if it was 7, it wouldn't be an acid. It'd be neutral, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, that should be stronger. Uh, and then obviously the opposite. Well, yeah, the opposite is true for alkalis. So stronger alkalis tend to be closer to pH fourteen, and weaker acids tend to be closer to pH 7. Okay, so the closer it is to 7, the general rule is that the, the weaker the acid. Yeah, the further away, uh, or the weaker the acid or the alkali, the further away it is from um, 7, the stronger that acid or alkali is. Yeah? Now, If I just move this up a wee bit. So, pH scale is used to indicate how acidic or alkaline are solution is okay and I want to sort of highlight that word yeah a solution is because what it has to be in solution we can't measure the pH of something without it being in solution okay so um, solids and gases Sorry. Solids and gases must 
first be dissolved in water before their pH changes. Okay, I'm just going to show you that um, just now. So, what I've got here, I've got some sodium hydroxide, but if you look inside, you'll see that it's solid, and I've actually got some sodium hydroxide already looked out for us, okay? Now, if I, so here's some pH paper, okay? If I tap pH paper on the solid, nothing happens. Yeah, we don't get a change in colour, okay? If I put that into a solution of sodium hydroxide, I'm already... Do it with the colours not changed already. You'll see that it changes colour to purple, okay? So what we need to do is we need to take that solid sodium hydroxide and we need to dissolve it into the water. Now, if I take uh, the water here, this is uh, the water we put right at the start. So, this is green, yeah? Now, if I add this sodium hydroxide into here, what should happen is when the solid starts to dissolve, it should turn into an alkali, and look at that, absolutely beautiful, okay? So, yeah, how cool is that? So that's what you have to take away from that. If we want to measure the pH, it has to be in solution. Yeah, we can't measure the pH of gas, we can't measure the pH of solid. We need to dissolve that first, okay? And then measure the pH. So this brings me to my next point. And this is a very important point, not so much now, but it will be later on. So if the solid, Okay, I'll, I'll focus on solids now. So if the solid does not dissolve in water, then the pH remains unchanged. Okay, and that's very important. And if you think about it, it makes sense. If the water isn't dissolving the solid, the solid can't cause the water to change colour when we add universal indicator of pH vapour into it, okay? So, let's uh, go on to the next. So, I'll, I'll bring this back. Right, so, um, let's go for common acids. Okay, and these are common acids that you will have heard of, yeah? So, uh, common acids, you have fizzy drinks, okay? They com uh, contain an acid called carbonic acid, okay? Uh, you could have, uh, you've got lemon, um, lime, and an orange, okay, they contain an acid called citric acid, and you've probably heard of that, yeah? These types of fruit are all uh, citrus fruits, so the uh, reason they're called citrus fruit is because it contains citric acid, okay? Uh, now, one that comes up in the exam, uh, I'm going to put a wee star here, one that comes up in sort of past paper questions quite a lot is vinegar. Now, we've already done this in Unit 2. We've spoke about this. You should already know this, but if you don't, now's the time to know it. Okay, so vinegar, the sort of systematic name for vinegar is ethanoic acid. And just a wee reminder, okay, F is the prefix for 2, and then because it's a, a carboxylic acid, it contains the carboxyl group, like that, then obviously fill in your hydrogen so the valences all match up and then there it is, okay? So that is ethanoic acid, which is vinegar, yeah? 
and another one you could have uh, vitamins okay you have heard of vitamin C that is ascorbic acid right common bases now you'll see that I'm changing between uh, bases and alkalis I don't want you to get too confused just yet I'll explain more about that in more detail but basically uh, all alkalis are bases alkalis are just bases that are soluble in water but I'll give you a note on that later don't worry about that okay um, so toothpaste is a common base yeah neutralizes the acid in your teeth um, you've got soaps and detergents, they will help get rid of grease and oil stains, and also wasp stings. Okay, they're also basic, yeah. So toothpaste, soap and detergents, and wasp stains. Okay, now... neutral solutions what we're going to do we're just going to focus on water yeah massive uh, case study on water so let's move this up right so get this down so water is a neutral substance yeah we know that it's got a ph equal to seven yeah so water is a neutral substance now, what we're interested in, does it conduct? Okay. Now, if we look at water, yeah, if I just, water you should know is H2O. Okay. Hydrogen, oxygen, both non-metals. Okay. So because it's both non-metals, you've got covalent bonding. Yeah. And it's a molecule, it's got a discrete formula, so water has a discrete covalent molecular structure. Okay, and you need to know what a discrete covalent molecular structure is. I, I, I'm not going into detail, but it's got low boiling point because it contains a van der Waals, even though it contains strong covalent bonds, it's the van der Waals that break. Um, and you should know that discrete covalent molecular structures, because they're both non-metals, okay, discrete covalent molecular structures, they do not conduct electricity okay the only non sorry non-metal uh, that conducts that you're aware of so far is carbon in the form of graphite yeah now this is the this is the cool part because water it is a discrete covalent molecular structure you would expect it doesn't conduct electricity but water does Okay, water does. However, water does conduct. Okay, so as chemists, we've got to ask ourselves, why? Why is that? Why is water conducting electricity when it's a discrete covalent molecular? Okay. Now, before we go on to that, yeah, uh, going to give you a wee refresher. So, if we call this a, a what? A side note. Yeah, wee side note. Now, ionic compounds conduct. And I know what you're saying. You're screaming down your phone. They only conduct, ionic compounds conduct only in solution okay 
And why is that? And I really hope that you all know why ionic compounds only conduct in solution. It's because the only conduct in solution um, because the ions, okay, not the electrons, the ions are free to move. Okay, so that's just a wee side note there. So back to our whole why does water conduct? So um, if water conducts, then it must, yeah, big must, it must contain ions. Okay, now what we're going to do, there's a, go to a wee table, I suppose you could freehand it, I always like to be pretty, pretty neat. So type of water, uh, conductivity. Now usually we do a wee experiment and, um, oh, sorry, never knew you could see that. Usually we do a wee experiment here that you're able to see it, but obviously we're not allowed to. Uh, but there is an experiment on Scholar, which I'm sure your teacher, whoever it is, um, will show you, okay? But anyway, uh, we're going to look at slightly three types of water. We're just going to look at plain old tap water. Oh, sorry, let's change that first. We're going to look at uh, distilled water. Okay. Uh, we'll also call that pure water. Then we're going to look at tap water. Then we're going to look at... a oh, sorry, sodium chloride solution. And all we mean uh, by that is that it's water and we've added salt. Okay, sodium chloride, you should know, is table salt. So uh, we've taken water and we've added sodium chloride. We've added salt to it. Yeah? Now, conductivity, distilled water, that's pure water. That's water in its purest form. Okay, and then when, when I start to talk about the ions and stuff, you'll understand what I mean by uh, distilled water. But that's distilled water in its pure form. And it does conduct, but... It's got a low conductivity, okay? It only conducts ever so slightly, yeah? And as we go from tap water to sodium uh, chloride solution, it goes from low to high, yeah? Now, this makes sense, yeah? Because sodium chloride is ionic, yeah? So it has lots of ions that are free to move okay so that's why now what this must tell us if that's got a lot of ions that must have only a small amount of ions yeah So, what we're going to do, water, just make a wee note here, so water, I'm going to introduce a new term to you, water dissociates. Dissociates, and all we mean by the term dissociates, it's essentially just another word for water breaks up, okay? But you need to get used to that term dissociates. So I should really add a wee note here. Um, sorry, water molecules dissociates into hydrogen ions. 
Okay. Now hydrogen hydrogen ion is just H plus. Remember, an ion is a charged particle. Yeah. If it's got a charge, it's an ion. Okay. So water molecules dissociate. Uh, water molecules dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Okay. And that is OH minus. So what happens here is we take our H2 liquid. If you want me to draw it out, it looks like that. It's got an angular shape. Yeah. And then what happens? That dissociates into H plus ions. I'm putting AQ because it's in solution, obviously. Yeah, it's water, it's in solution. And hydroxide ions. Okay, now you need to know this equation. This is essential that you know what's happening here. Okay? So, we're going to start relating this to pH now, okay? Because we spoke about pH, it all comes back to pH. So a neutral solution has a pH of 7, yeah? You should know that. If it's an acid, it's less than 7. If it's an alkali, it's greater than 7. So a neutral solution has a pH of 7. This means it must have equal numbers of H plus and OH negative ions. Okay, so it's got the same amount of hydrogen ions, and it's got the same amount. Uh, it's got the same amount of hydrogen ions as it does hydroxide ions, and that will make sense when I sort of highlight it. Now, if we look at this water molecule that I've drawn out here, yeah, H two O. Okay, what happens when it breaks up? Um, well, I've got a different pen here. Let me use that. When it breaks up, it breaks this bond here. Yeah. So. What we are left with, yeah, it breaks up into a H, which is your hydrogen ion, your H plus, and then it breaks up into your OH minus ions. Okay, so every time water breaks up, it must break it break up into one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. Okay, so because there's equal amounts every single time, that's why it's got a pH of 7. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, make sure you know that. Yeah, that, this whole bit here, I'm not going to obviously uh, highlight it all, but this bit here is so important. Okay, so a neutral solution has a pH of 7. This means it must have equal numbers of H plus hydrogen and OH negative hydroxide ions. Okay, so please make sure you understand that. Yeah? Now, this is where it gets cool, I suppose. So, acids. Yeah. Now, neutral solutions have equal amounts of H plus and OH negative ions. Acids, okay, I'll make this wee note. Acids, uh, sorry, just to scroll that out. Acidic solutions have a pH less than 7, yeah, remember that sign? Less than, okay, so acidic solutions have a pH less than 7. This means that 
you have more hydrogen ions, yeah, that's your H plus, than hydroxide ions, and that's your OH negative ions, okay? And again, very much like that statement above, this here, this whole bit is so important. Yeah, you need to know that. So acidic solutions, pH less than seven. Yeah, that's all well and good. That you learn that in second year. But as chemists, what we need to know is that the reason that they've got a pH less than seven is because they've got more hydrogen ions than OH minus ions. Yeah. Hey. Right. Last wee bit, and then I think we'll stop there. Um, alkaline solutions. Okay, so alkaline solutions, they have, hopefully you're, you've got this memorised by now, so they have a pH greater than, there's a symbol for greater than, greater than 7. Okay, so... This means they have more hydroxide ions this time. Okay, so they've got more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions and that's your H plus okay and again so important you will get asked about that not many things I can guarantee in life this I can guarantee it'll come up one way or another so let's do a wee summary yeah because it's always good to have a wee summary summarize uh, what we've just learned so neutral pH equals seven and your hydrogen ions are equal to your hydroxide ions yeah uh, if it's an acidic solution you've got your ph less than seven okay and that tells us that we have more yeah more hydrogen ions than we do hydroxide ions and then the last one, uh, if it's an alkaline solution, yeah, it's got a pH greater than 7. Okay, that tells us that, well, we've either got less hydrogen ions than OH minus, or we've got more hydrogen ions than H plus. Okay, it's the same thing. So, yeah, that there, all three of them, you need to know. Okay, nothing, nothing more to it. That is it. Yeah. So we've done quite a lot. Yeah. A lot of stuff you need to know. Okay. So you need to know acids have a pH less than seven. Alkalis pH greater than seven. Neutral solutions pH seven. Yeah. Um, stronger acids tend to be closer to one pH 1, stronger alkalis tend to be closer to pH 7. Yeah, the weaker the acid, the weaker the alkali, the closer it's going to be to 7 is the usual trend. Yeah. Um, what else is important is that uh, we can only find the pH of solutions. If we've got a salt or a gas, we need to dissolve that first. Yeah, and again, you might have forgotten this, but it's a very, see when we start doing questions, again, this is another question that comes up quite a lot. If the solid does not dissolve, the pH, nothing happens to it. Okay, absolutely nothing. Um, 
Common acids and bases, again, you can look at that at your own free will. Vinegar, ethanolic acid, you need to know that. Yeah, there's no getting away from that. Um, yep, you need to know why water conducts. That's a big thing. Why is water conducting? It's a discrete covalent molecular, so it shouldn't conduct, but it does. And the reason it conducts is it because it has ions. Yeah, the water molecule dissociates into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Yeah, you need to know that. Now, just a quick point, I did say I was going to come back to it. Distilled water is pure. Yeah, and what we mean by pure water, that means it, there is the majority of the water is made up of water molecules. However, the reason that it conducts ever so slightly is because a few of those water molecules dissociate into the two ions and that's why it's allowed to conduct, yeah? Because then the ions are free to move. Um, obviously, uh, tap water isn't as pure, okay? So it's got less of the water molecules, it's got more ions, which is why tap water conducts more. Uh, sodium, if we add salt into that water solution, it's gonna conduct the best and that's because it contains um, ionic bonding, yeah, and the ions will break up and they're obviously free to move, yeah. And obviously the last wee bit that we learned, you need to know that, yeah, you need to know that neutral solutions pH 7, they've got equal amounts of hydrogen and hydroxide ions, if it's acidic solution, it's got more hydrogen ions than it does, um, hydroxide ions and alkaline, pH greater than 7, it has more hydroxide ions than it does hydrogen ions. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so we'll leave it there and I will see you for the next lesson. Thank you.